So Brandon, a lot of people buy a new computer and they're wanting to know how to get this data trans, how to get the data off the old computer onto the new computer, or maybe you've done something with like uh, video editing or something on a laptop, mm -hmm. but you don't have a DVD burner, so you want to connect it to another computer where you can actually burn it to a DVD. Um, you can do that. Um, it's not that hard. We're going to show you how to do it with just a couple of cables. Um, I guess one of the key things that uh, you might want to do if you're yeah. using, like, say, we'll go Mac to Mac first because that's oh, the yeah. simplest one. If you use a FireWire cable, a six-pin FireWire cable, that's the, the the bigger one, Standard and that's for hard drives or yeah. If you buy an external have... FireWire hard drive, it's going to use that kind of a cable. So what you're going to want to do is just plug that into the back of the Mac. You plug it into the laptop, and if you boot the second computer that you want to get the stuff off of, when you start it up, it's shut down. You plug it in with FireWire. You start it up. You hold down Apple T. Actually, you hold... can just hold down the T key, and it'll work. Oh. Too. Okay. It depends, on which, anyway. it depends on which models you've got. He's absolutely right. Some models do the Apple Plus T, and some just do T. So if one doesn't work for you, try the other one. And it starts it with the T stands for target disk mode. Then what happens, it'll actually mount on the desktop of, of your newer Mac. And then you can transfer data off of that one because it just shows a hard drive. You double click, you open the files, and you get access to them. There you go. The cool thing about that is, is if you have a DVD drive on that one, you mm -hmm. can actually use that one that you're connecting as a DVD burner as well. Yeah. So that's totally cool. Um, now, if you do buy a new Mac, there is an option when it prompts you, when you start it up and it goes, no, 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 set up your settings, and it asks, do you have an older Mac you want to connect stuff with? You can actually do that. Uh, you just connect the FireWire cable to it again, and uh, then you start it up in the target disk, and it'll automatically transfer stuff over from your applications, your user folders, user IDs, all of that sort of thing. So that's a really easy thing to do on the Mac. It's a little more complicated, however, on the PCs, which is why you have to ask the tech and why we're here. Now, we've already connected this one, these two laptops, um, with an Ethernet crossover cable. Actually, have here. It looks just like a normal Ethernet cable, except for it has a few extra pins and it's, it's actually different. crossed over. You can't use a standard black cable that you normally would use. You need to make sure that you do use the Ethernet crossover. So he's clicked it in there. Yep. Now, you have to turn on file sharing on this computer. We've already done it, but he's going to show you on the screen how to uh, turn on your file sharing. Okay. To like uh, my documents folder. Yeah, something that you might want to do first is these have wireless on them. So we've noticed mm. that if you're doing network to network, it's best to turn that off. Turn yeah. off all your firewalls and everything. Particularly because you're going to be turning firewalls off, and so you don't want to leave your other network yeah, connections on. You, don't, you just don't want to be connected. Let's see, we go down in here. And now we've already got him connected on there. Go to computer. Computer here. I'm sorry, the keypad's hard <laughs> to touch sometimes. Then if you want to share something, you could like double click on the C drive. We get to like, like documents. Mm -hmm. Uh, or go to my documents, I guess, or find something we want to share. Go to yeah, documents. documents over here. There we go. Let's well, say so we want to share the uh, Google gadgets. You can right click on it. Or I also notice it has a share at the top, too, just mm -hmm. for your own personal. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, there's. Yeah. No, I don't see that at the top. That's one of the new Vista things to make things look yeah, a little nice, it, I guess. Yeah, add these little icons and stuff to it. So we can actually go down here. Uh, I guess that's the owner of this current one. And um, just hit share. It may take a few min minutes, it'll say. This will actually probably take a little bit longer than what we would like, so mm -hmm. I'm going to cancel out this now. But what that does is it opens up the share. If you have another computer connected, like in the case we're about ready to show you, mm -hmm. they can actually connect to you by going to the right path and pull things out of that folder once it's shared. Using the user ID and password that you've got on the on that computer. Mm -hmm. But we already have it turned on this one. This is an XP machine. This is a new Vista machine. And this is the one we're going to try to, now we're going to try to connect Vista to this one. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? There's something that we had to do first, which was actually setting up the IP and everything else to talk to each other. Okay. Um, we had to set up, normally if you have like broadband or something, you'll have it to where it automatically will configure your IP. We have to set it to where it's static, meaning that you put your own IP address in. We're creating our own virtual network, essentially, mm -hmm. our own real network. So I just go in here, I go into network, you know, you may have to do a few steps or something. Uh, let's see here, it's finally showing that, and you have to excuse us, Vista is a little bit new, so. Uh, where was it? My network connections, network and sharing, and over here it was under connect to view networks, ah, manage network connections, it was much easier in XP. All right, right here we have the local area connection. Oh, I'm sorry. What you're going to have to do while he's finding that is you're going to have to set up a certain IP address. You're going to have to set up one computer with one IP address and another computer with a second IP address. Okay. So now that we've got this back up, I'm actually going to have to right-click on it and go down to properties. Mm -hmm. your local area network. Not your wireless, because we have that turned off anyway. Mm -hmm. It's going to ask you, you know, accept or deny or, you know, you've seen the commercials. <laughs> 
So what we'll actually have to do is go down through here. And I think it was version 4 that we decided we mm -hmm. had to change on That's here. That's right. It has the two versions. I'm not exactly sure what the 6 is, to be honest. But you select that and hit your properties. It's going to come up in here. Again, you're going to have your options. We need to zoom in on this to make sure we get this on the screen here. Mm -hmm. And you can see on there that uh, basically we've already set it up your IP address. You have to kind of manually configure it. So you have to make yeah. sure you, you set that manually. Normally you don't want it to here. configure automatically. That's what you normally would do on an Ethernet connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you normally saw it was automatic, mm -hmm. so I switched it here. It leaves everything blank, and it'll just take a second. We actually have it set to be 10, uh, 1. You have to click, then you click on the next box and type in a 1. We just do that for simplicity, uh, but this is what I recommend you use when you're just doing two computers. And you're going to identify one of them with 10.1.1.1, and the second one, which we already did on this one, we set it up as 10.2, I mean 10.1.1.2. And... Uh, if we pull those up in the lower thirds, we'll show you those numbers again, so you can write that down if you want to. You'll also need to write down the uh, subnet mask, which is going to be 255.255.255.0. You want to make sure those are those the same, same on both machines. Yeah, those will be the same, unlike the IP address that you're setting up. And the rest of everything else you can leave, mm -hmm. unless, of course, you're doing, like, Internet sharing or something. Mm -hmm. That's a different story. Yeah. So we're going to close all of that down. I'm going to go down here, close all that down again. A lot of windows to close down. <laughs> so anyway, that's how you set up on both of those. Okay, so we now have both these set up. We created our own little network. Now we're ready to connect. Exactly. And it's actually pretty simple, we found out. We thought it was a little bit tougher than what it was, but I went and clicked <laughs> computer again. Then up here at the top, if um, we could get a close it's view e of the screen. It's easy to hide this, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, up here at the top on the uh, map and network drive right up there. We well, just click that. Now, first thing, it's going to uh, select a drive to assign to Z's it. Z's fine. Just that's fine. No one has a Z that. drive. Now, what we found out is you have to do, it gives you the example down here. Yeah, there's an Start example right there. 10.1.1.2, because that's his computer. I want that's to right. That's the one we just uh, set up. Now, what happens two. is once I type that in, it's smart enough so it already knows that I can hit browse, and it finds that computer on the network. I just click it. It should drop down a list We're getting the here. Vista spinning, Apple chasing -like its tail line. Beach ball thing. <laughs> So you, can, you can actually go in there and actually type in another forward slash and then put in the folder that you're looking for, such as, you know, your, whatever mm -hmm. your hard drive was. But this is nice because you can find, there's the HD, the C drive, in other here, words. Mm -hmm. so but in this way, case, yeah. XP documents. I click there. Oh, we clicked on that C one. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do that one. Then we'll show them how to disconnect. It's fine. And you notice when I click that, it automatically puts it in for you okay. in case you don't know the path. Let's browse again. Let's go to the other one so we can show them the yeah. actual document, actually copy one over. Yeah, XP documents, that's well, fine. Well, basically, when you turn on sharing, one thing we knew, that maybe didn't explain to him is when you turn on sharing, you go to share a folder, you'll want to name that folder for the network. Mm -hmm. That's different, because if I'm sharing my documents, it might be called my documents on my computer, but for the network purposes of sharing, I want to rename it something else. You want to name it something that's simple. And I call it XP documents, because this is my XP computer, as opposed to my Vista computer, mm -hmm. so I don't get them confused, okay? So ma make sure that you do that. Okay, so, so anyway, we go in here, we go into browse, it's got the XP documents. Back down here, and here. once we click this. And you click connect. Yeah. Oh, there we are. Automatically pulls me in through here. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we have all the files inside of here. Now, there we go. There's that Ask the Techies test that I was trying to get. Now, this is only a text document, but let's pretend it was a 50 gigabyte file. Video file or something. Yeah, yeah, something. It's a, it's a folder of all the Ask the Techies uh, videos that I've got encoded on my computer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So it's pretty simple. We just take it and click from right here, and then on the left side it has documents. That's the documents on your actual computer that you're on right now. Okay. So we'll just take that and we'll drag it over into... To wherever I want to documents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, documents in this case. So go. when I click documents, you'll see that is the documents on this computer that I'm working on right here. And it's been transferred over. It works fine. Excellent. Okay. Well, that seems pretty simple. And now we, we, we got to disconnect. I mean, mm -hmm. we should do that. How do we... We already did that once before, I guess. You just... Uh, Pretty simple. I usually want to make sure I click on it once and do that. Um, then I right click, and in my list here, it's disconnect. It's right there, just to disconnect when you right click on it. Yeah, okay. so it's disconnect. It's off my screen now. I can close that down and go about our merry way. Excellent. Okay. Now, uh, what if I didn't buy a new uh, Vista computer and I bought a new Mac instead? That's <laughs> super simple. 